my WWE Fatal 4-Way 2010 pay-per-view review. The pay-per-view just went off the air, and pretty much just like I expected with this pay-per-view, it really wasn't much of anything. This was one of those examples of a WWE pay-per-view that they need to just trim down the number of the pay-per-views they have, or build up to stuff on a pay-per-view that actually seems like it's worthy of being a pay-per-view. This show, I would say, other than maybe one or two things on here, for the most part, felt like stuff you would just see on a three-hour edition of Monday Night Raw. Not something that they that would be worth your $45 for a pay-per-view. It just didn't feel like that. And obviously with the card and the lack of build-up and the lackluster build-up in the card for this, you kind of expect that going in. So I wasn't expecting much from this at all. And actually the best match on this pay-per-view was actually a match that just got added at the last minute. That was Chris Jericho versus Evan Bourne. That was the best match on here, and that got added the last minute. Everything else, you know, on this pay-per-view, you know, you didn't see anything, you know, god all or that bad. But it was more or less TV quality, not pay-per-view quality. The opening of the pay-per-view starts off with Vince McMahon. He's addressing the Bret Hart situation that happened on Monday Night Raw with NXT angle, and with this, you know, where's Bret? What's Bret's gonna? What Bret's gonna do next? It seems like they possibly might be writing Brett off of TV and he might be done with as far as on screen character at this moment, for at least at this point in time. And what is going to happen with uh, Vince Man and his character saying what is he going to do to uh, against the NXT uh, rookies, what's going to happen to them. And that's probably what you'll figure out what, what that's going to lead to coming tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw. The first match on the pay per view was. Um, Drew McIntyre versus Kofi Kingston for the Intercontinental Championship. And they had a pretty good match at the Over the Limit pay-per-view. And this was pretty much just the same type of match you saw there. Just they got a little more time and they were able to do a little more things in this match. Good back and forth action. It was a good match to start the pay-per-view off with. You know, nothing great, but nothing bad. I would say it was kind of at least a watchful to solid, almost a good match. Um, decent way to start the pay-per-view with uh, Kofi Kingston retaining the Intercontinental Championship after Matt Hardy comes out there and gets involved in this match. So Kofi retains the Intercontinental Championship in about a two-and-a-half star match. Then the next matchup is the Fatal 4-Way match for the Divas Championship. This is Alicia Fox versus Eve Torres versus Gail Kim versus uh, Maurice. And this is just your typical Divas match. Nothing really too special in here. I was really hoping that Gail Kim would have won this match. I knew she would, and I knew there was zero chance that she was going to win. But just hoping that WWE might have finally given her a chance and might have actually done something. But no, they didn't do it. They didn't go that route. They actually went a route I didn't even think they would, which was have Alicia Fox become the new Divas champion. Uh, at the end of the match, you saw... Um, Eve go. If she hit the if she hit the moon salt on. Um, I think it was Maurice. She hit the moon salt moon salt on, and then Alicia Fox just comes in there, sneaks the victory out, and wins and wins the Divas Championship that way. In about a one and a half star match, nothing too special about that match. So the next matchup was the match of the night, which wasn't a classic match or anything spectacular, but it was still a good match. And this was Chris Jericho versus Evan Moore. This was a a good surprise added to this pay-per-view at the last moment. And this was the best match on here. Good back and forth action with Chris Jericho and Evan Bourne. And even better, the thing I liked the most was Evan Bourne actually got put over in this match. Not only put over very good by Chris Jericho, but actually put over actually winning the match as well, which was even better. Evan Bourne picks the victory up after hitting the shoot the star press in a three and one four star match. Definitely the best match on this pay-per-view. And if there's something that you should check out on this pay-per-view, which there's really not, not much on here to write home about or say, check this out, you need to see this. But this is something that I would say is worth checking out, the Chris Jericho and Evan Bourne match, because it was pretty good. Even, even, even though it did kind of feel like a match, you would expect seeing like a good TV match. That's kind of what it felt like. And just didn't have that pay-per-view feeling behind it. You could tell they were holding back. But still, what they did in the ring was pretty good, and I'm glad Evan Bourne's, you know, they're still continuing the Evan Bourne push, and they're using him pretty good. Just hopefully they keep on doing it, and possibly, you know, he's over with the crowd. Um, he's obviously probably too small in WWE's eyes to ever become a main eventer, but hey, he could at least maybe be a contender or something, or do something like that, because um, he had a good match here with Chris Jericho. Like I said, the best thing on this pay-per-view that I would even say check out. 
Then the next matchup was the Fatal 4-Way match for the uh, World Heavyweight Championship, the SmackDown brand. This was Big Show versus CM Punk versus Rey Mysterio um, versus Jack Swagger, the current champion. And you saw some good stuff in here. I like the stuff that uh, Big Show was doing at the beginning. What they were doing at the beginning was all uh, everyone was ganging up on the Big Show, and Big Show was showing his sheer dominance, uh, beating everyone down. That was that worked pretty good for a little bit. Then you saw some good stuff with CM Punk and Rey Mysterio. Swagger did some good stuff in here. You saw, you know, some pretty good stuff in this match. I mean, nothing, you know, over the top or anything spectacular in this match, but a few good things in here and. I like the work you saw with Swagger and CM Punk and Rey Mysterio. Big Show, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Big Show, like most people already know, he actually didn't hurt the match. It was actually a pretty solid match. I would give it a solid three stars. And Rey Mysterio actually picks up the victory and becomes the new World Heavyweight Champion, which really shocked me that they gave him the World Heavyweight Championship. But don't have any no, don't have any problem with him being World Heavyweight Champion for SmackDown. I think he could do a lot of great stuff as World Heavyweight Champion. I mean, do I think he's going to keep it a long time? No. I actually would be kind of surprised if he keeps it past SummerSlam at the longest. He might keep it till the September pay-per-view, but he will probably not have the title. He'll probably have a two- or three-month title reign at the longest. Then the next matchup was um, The Miz versus R-Truth for the United States Heavyweight Championship. And I was kind of looking forward to this match, but this match just drug on and just felt like it was lasting forever, and they weren't really doing much in here. It was pretty much like a match you've seen these two on Monday Night Raw. Just they dragged it out, and pretty much I guess they were doing it to, you know, cut some time off of the pay-per-view, and they, you know, did some decent stuff in here, but it was just dragged on so much, and it was boring for most of the match that I just couldn't get into this match. It was just one of those types of matches that I just could not get into. I mean, was it anything, you know, one of the worst matches I've ever seen? No. I mean, I would give it, you know, two stars because some of it, some of the stuff they did towards the end and near and in the middle of the match after, you know, the slow start of the match was actually starting to pick up and it was starting to be a little entertaining. And The Miz retains the United States Heavyweight Championship in, like I said, a two-star match. And then the next matchup is the Hart Dynasty of um, Tyson Kidd, D.H. Smith, and Natalia Neidhart versus the Usos and um, Tamila, Tamilia, I think that was her name, Jimmy Stuka's daughter. And this this was originally, I guess, was going to be a tag team match just with the Usos versus the um, Hart Dynasty, which I would have preferred to see that. I mean, Natalia Neidhart, I think she's a good woman's worker. And haven't seen um, Tamila, uh, Tam uh, Tamila yet as far as in the ring. What she did in this match, she didn't seem like she was one of the terrible women wrestlers for – WWE, she seemed like she was pretty much above average, better than, you know, the typical diva, but this would have worked out so much better if this was just a tag team match with the Usos and Hart Dynasty and really would have showcased, you know, two tag teams, two up-and-coming tag teams, and would have been really good if they would have done that. I really wish they would have done that, but for what they did in the match, you saw, you know, pretty good stuff with the Usos in here and the um, Hart Dynasty. Hart Dynasty pick up the victory in this match, and I would say um, about... About two star match. I mean, it wasn't anything bad. It's just like a lot of these matches on this pay per view were just, you know, watchable at best. Nothing real special and spectacular behind it. It'd be like stuff like I said earlier. This felt kind of like a three hour edition of Monday Night Raw where you saw some good, good stuff on here and not really anything too bad, but it wasn't something that should have been put on a pay per view. Something that WWE is actually trying to tell people go out your way and purchase this pay per view, which. With this card and the way they just threw stuff together, I'd be shocked this actually did any good buy rates. And I'll, I would be shocked that they keep the Fatal 4-Way concept for next year. I'm thinking this concept would be one of those concepts that will completely fail. Just because the lack of the buildup of this pay-per-view and just the card of this. The, other than maybe a lot of people will just order pay-per-views to see John Cena. Because I know he's very marketable, but, marketable, but it's not going to draw too many fans in. I mean, it's going to draw a good amount in, but not to the level what WWE probably would expect for one of their monthly pay-per-views. The next matchup was the World Heavyweight, not the World Heavyweight, but the WWE Championship in the Fatal 4-Way match with uh, John Cena defending the championship against Edge versus Randy Orton versus Sheamus. And this match was going along pretty good. I liked the stuff within this match. Um, this was actually going on pace to probably be one of the best matches, but I think the ending of the match with the whole NXT part could have been booked better. Um, I didn't think it was booked to perfection like, perfection like I thought it should have been. 
um, because they could have done something really good with this. Possibly they could lead to something good, possibly tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw. But you saw some good stuff in this match. It was going on at, before the ending. Match was probably going on to probably be one of the best matches of the night and probably was one of the matches that actually had a feeling behind it that was actually felt like it was a pay-per-view quality match. Because you saw some good stuff with Edge and Orton in this match. Uh, Cena and Edge did some good stuff. They always have very good chemistry. And Orton and Cena, even though a lot of people in my in myself as well, you know, got tired of, tired of seeing them two against each other. They do have pretty good chemistry, and just as long as it's not like a few that's it's shoving down our throats, them two work very good with each other. Sheamus did some good stuff in here. I gotta admit, you know, six months ago when Sheamus won the title at the um, TLC paper, I was completely against him, wasn't a fan of him at all, but I would say he has improved and he has kind of grown on me. I don't dislike him anymore. I actually don't mind him at all. He's actually, you know, Triple H, you know, proves that, you know, when he wants to, he can put over a star because at WrestleMania, he pretty much put over Sheamus. And since then, Sheamus has been built up pretty good. And before that, you know, Cena kind of built him up as well in Orton. So they've been building him up in a way, actually putting some credibility on him, actually seeming like he's worthy of being a main event star in WWE. And the end of this match just kind of was, I knew, I knew it was coming. I knew they were going to do it. Um, because obviously the NXT invasion angle and the NXT angle would have played a big part in this main event. What it was, you saw, you know, towards the end of this match, you saw them cut to the backstage. I think you saw um, Evan Bourne, R Truth, the Hart Dynasty, and a couple other people. They were watching um, the pay per view on the monitor back there. And then out of nowhere, you see the NXT rookies attack them, beat them down. Then they go to the ring. They, I think they attack some. Um, um, road agents and some security people going towards the ring and they come out there they beat up Cena beat him down and then uh, Sheamus walks in there sneaks in wins the World Heavyweight Championship and then they try to go after Sheamus Sheamus runs in the crowd they try to go after him then he ends up you see him again then they, he runs the back and the pay-per-view ends with just the NXT rookies run into the back and you see um, Cena beat down in the ring Orton's outside the ring beaten up Edge is out there as well and that's the way the pay-per-view ends so it could have been booked better, I thought. I think they could have made something like really epic with this NXT invasion on or NXT angle on this pay per view. But I, I don't think it felt completely short. But I think it, you know, could have been done something be done better. And I think the way they did it, it kind of hurt the quality of the main event. Even though I knew they would obviously have the have the um, NXT part play a portion in the main event, but it kind of hurt the quality of the match. And I thought they could have done something better. They could have made it something like, you know, all the wrestlers came from the back, tried to come out there, beat them up, chase them around, and they had a brawl all over the arena and something like that. That would have been something great to see. But the main event was going on pretty good, and for what it was, I would give it two and three, two and three, four stars. This pay-per-view overall, I would probably give it about a 5.5, and probably some people probably might be saying that's probably being a little too generous because I'm Pretty sure there's going to be probably a lot of people saying, you know, this pay-per-view is probably like one of the worst pay-per-views in a long time. And a lot of people tend to do that every single month when there's a bad pay-per-view. They over-exaggerate and say it's the worst pay-per-view ever and stuff like that. And I'm not going to go that far, but it wasn't a good pay-per-view. It wasn't a pay-per-view that's worth your $45. Uh, I feel sorry for anyone that actually went out their way and purchased this pay-per-view and wasted $45 on this pay-per-view. But... With the card of this pay-per-view, I think if anyone did that, they should expect to see what happened on there. So, like I said, give this pay-per-view a 5.5 out of 10. You know, stay clear of it. Do not get this. And if there's something you check out on here, check out the Chris Jericho and Evan Bourne match. And since most people will be interested in what they did with the NXT angle, watch the main event. Because the main event was pretty good. You saw some good action in there. And I know most people will be interested just to see what they did with the NXT Invasion angle. So those are the two main things I would say watch on this pair if you do check anything out. And yeah, that's it for my um, Fatal 4-Way 2010 pay-per-view review. I right, peace.